All right, so we just recently wrapped up Christmas and I also just had my birthday, which fell on January 4th. So in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you guys all the fragrances I got for Christmas and for my birthday. So stay tuned. Hey, what's going on guys? Hunter here and welcome back to my channel if you're a return subscriber. And if you're new, what I do is I make fragrance related content. So if you love fragrances, definitely consider hitting that subscribe button down below. But that is correct guys. I'm gonna be talking about all the fragrances I got as gifts for both Christmas and my birthday. So let's not waste any more time. And first we're gonna talk about all the fragrances I got for Christmas. All right, so the first fragrance I have here that I got for Christmas is actually a good line. And the fragrance is Lone Ideal Sport. Now, I know this one doesn't get much talk about, uh, but this is actually a very unique fragrance and a very unique take on a sport fragrance at that, guys. So with this one, you're actually gonna get some spiciness in here, some aquatic notes, and obviously you're gonna get that almond note as well that's in all of the Lone Ideal line. But it's just done very, very different. You don't expect like a sport fragrance to be spicy, but Guerlain, they took the chance and went with a spicy fragrance for their sport flanker. And they did not do, they did not disappoint at all. This one is actually very, very stunning. Um, I don't really see it being that crowd pleasing, such as like the Eau de Parfum, which is like a cherry bomb, or even the Lit Intense, which is another one I own. This one is just different. It doesn't really smell like the, um, the rest of the line. I guess you do get the same almond accord in here, but it goes a completely different route, guys. So if you like spicy aquatic fragrances, I know those two don't really mix, but Guerlain is top notch when it comes to fragrances and they blended this one to perfection. Okay, so next up, I actually have two fragrances because they're from the same house and the same line. And the fragrance I'm speaking about is Armov's Hunter, the original, and Armov's Hunter Intense. Now, with the original, um, what you're gonna get with this it's just a solid, it does open up kind of citrusy with the grapefruit in here, but it's just a solid woody fragrance, like a woody base to this, very masculine. The performance isn't the best with the original Hunter. And I don't think this one gets much hype, much hype, but the one I do love quite a bit and that shocked me is the Intense. Now I know there was quite a bit of hype behind this flanker, and for very good reason. A lot of people compare this to, um, I think, Invictus Aqua and Sauvage. I do get this similar to Sauvage, guys, but I'm gonna tell you right up front, I prefer this over Dior Sauvage. I know, it shot me too, guys, but the performance, it, I guess it isn't as loud as the, especially the original Sauvage, but the smell that I just get from this fragrance, I just prefer so much more because with Sauvage, all you're gonna get is that Ambroxan. This one changes it up quite a bit. You do still get the Ambroxan with this one as well, but it's just very solid and there ha it has way more character to it too. It's more complex, which is surprising for being an R moth compared to like a Dior, but it is actually more complex instead of this being linear with Sauvage, it doesn't really change much from the opening to the dry down. This one on the other hand, definitely goes through stages. And I actually got a compliment on the first day of wearing this one too. So definitely check this one out. If you're, if you're looking for um, a Sauvage art alternative because you don't really want to spend like, I don't know, hundred or some dollars on that fragrance, definitely check our off, check out our Moss Hunter guys. I'm telling you right now, this is a good, good fragrance. And it even has my name, so you can't top that. So another fragrance I received for Christmas is actually probably in the top three best designer launch of 2021. And the fragrance I'm speaking about is Arzaro's The Most Wanted. Now, this one did come out in 2021, so it is the newest flanker out of all the Wanted uh, line. The only other one I own is the original. This one is completely different. This one's much more dark. It's a little bit gourmand too. I get some kind of like chocolate accord in here. A little bit spicy as well, but this is stunning. Um, for me, this one is right behind Dior Elixir for being the best designer launch of 2021. It was very, very close to Dior Elixir, but Elixir, I absolutely love. That is probably one of my favorite designer fragrances in general. Dior did a great job on that, but this one on the other hand is amazing. 
Um, I do, like I said, prefer this to um, the original Wanton. Wanton kind of goes a little bit um, off on my skin especially, but this one, amazing. Now, when I first wore this fragrance, because the original Wanted is very, very loud, especially the opening, guys. It projects like a monster. This one, on the other hand, it was kind of like, like subtle um, on the opening, but throughout the day, guys, it developed beautifully. I got kept getting whiffs of it throughout like a 10 hour shift. It lasted and lasted. This is also an Eau de Parfum Intense, so probably closer to being an Extract de Parfum, but very, very solid release from Azaro and definitely top three best designer launch of 2021. All right, so the last fragrance I got for Christmas actually kind of surprised me a little bit. It is actually a fragrance made by the perfumer Joe Malone, and it's actually Zara's Joe's Rhubarb, my bad. Um, it's actually a collaboration with Joe Malone. They do have quite a few fragrances. I do own one from the newest line, the uh, Vibrant Cities, I believe, Magnificently Dubai, which I will review. But this one here, Joe's Rhubarb, guys. Now, for being a rhubarb fragrance, this is just superb, guys. Absolutely gorgeous fragrance. Yeah, really good rhubarb. If you're not a fan of rhubarb, you probably won't like this one but it's done in a very, very natural way, guys. Obviously, Jo Malone is the perfumer. She's one of the best perfumers around, in my opinion. Um, she's made a lot of fragrances, but what honestly, the vibe I get from this is kind of shocking. It does kind of have a, um, a cannabis vibe, and I do own quite a few cannabis fragrances. Um, I do, it does smell similar to Fragrance Dubois Cannabis Blue. Just being very sour, it's a very sour fragrance, very green, very herbal. And obviously you get that vegetable, which yeah, rhubarb is actually a vegetable, which is kind of strange, but yeah, it is. Um, yeah, just phenomenal. Only other rhubarb fragrance I own that's dominant in that note is Azaro's Pour Homme Nighttime. This one is a much better developed rhubarb fragrance. So this is my go-to when I, when I want to wear something with the note of rhubarb. It's a very like um kind of exotic note in the fragrance realm. Not many fragrances actually have that note. And I think this one is just perfect, guys. Check this one out. If you don't own anything that has a note of rhubarb, you probably won't be disappointed. All right, so now for my birthday. That wrapped up all the fragrances I got for Christmas. Now for my birthday, the first one we're talking about is actually a fragrance that is, it's one of my favorite fragrances in general, guys. I absolutely love this stuff. And I don't know why I haven't had gotten it sooner, to be honest with you. And the fragrance I speak about is Tom Ford's Oud Wood. Wow. Like I said, this is my favorite private blend. It's not even just only my favorite private blend. It's one of my favorite fragrances of all time. Definitely in the top five. Now, a quick story about Oud Wood. Um, about four or f five or four years ago, something like that, I wasn't really heavy in the fragrances, but I did come across the Tom Ford private blend line and Oud Wood was one of the first fra higher end fragrances I got my nose on. And then maybe like a year later or something like that, I went to Nordstrom to actually pick up either Tuscan Leather or Oud Wood. Now, I wanted the original private blend bottle, which is of course the, like this bottle with the gold label, the gold plaque on top. Um, because Oud Wood used to be in that bottle as well. But at the time, Oud Wood was in this new silver gray label bottles. But I actually got Tuscan Leather. I talk about Tuscan Leather a lot since it is, was my first niche fragrance, higher end fragrance. Um, and yeah, I do actually prefer Oud Wood over Tuscan Leather. It was between the two. And I, now I have, I believe, eight private blends in my collection, and I'm finally adding my favorite one to the line. Four years later, guys, Oud Wood. If you don't know this fragrance, you have to smell it. It's very spicy, very, very woody, earthy, and oody as well. A lot of people say it's in like a synthetic oud, which it probably is. It doesn't really smell like a natural oud, but Whatever Tom Ford did with this, guys, is absolutely incredible. Just for some reason, this fragrance is so addicting. I just always want to smell it. That's why I was so upset because I actually got a decant. When I bought my Tuscan leather, they gave me a decant or sample of Oud Wood. And I obviously went through that. It's been four years now. I actually think it had sort of evaporated from that little vial. But I was so sad when that happened, guys. 
The only other fragrance I have that's close to this is actually Dossier's um, Oud. It's, it's the Oud Wood Flanker. Um, we're not Flanker, Oud Wood Interpretation. That one, it does kind of have the same vibe to it, of course, but that one's way more fresh. Not as Oudy, not as Woody at all, but I'm so glad to finally have this stuff, guys. And this was actually the fragrance I wore for my birthday since I got this in the morning. So I wore this throughout the day and I was, it just put a smile on my face the entire day. Just one of my favorite fragrances. Um, and for some reason, this formulation, I don't know if it's been pre-formulated, but I don't know what Tom Ford did, but this bottle here, the newer one, I actually get more of like a dirty Oudy, like a dirty Oud in this fragrance rather than the old ones I remember smelling. They were a little bit more fresh and stuff, but which I enjoy. So maybe Tom Ford upped it with this instead of like making reformulations worse. This is a phenomenal fragrance. I'm so glad to have this in my collection. All right, so next up guys, that's not the only Tom Ford I got for my birthday. I actually got another Tom Ford. I couldn't believe it, but I actually got ombre leather. Oh my. <laughs> Obviously this is gonna be a leather dominant fragrance. Now compared to Tuscan leather, I always thought I liked Tuscan leather more. Um, Tuscan leather is a little bit more darker. It has less leather in there, but um, less that less of the uh, the clean car like new car leather smell with Tuscan leather it has that raspberry note stuff like that. But this one here, it smells like a new car leather. If that's what you're looking for, do not get Tuscan leather. Get ombre leather. This is phenomenal. I know they just came out with the Ombre Leather Parfum, I think in 2021. I never smelled that one. And I adore Ombre Leather. This is like a bad boy fragrance. If you're wearing like a leather jacket, like a biker jacket, this is the fragrance you wanna, gonna, you're gonna wanna pull out. And people are not gonna wanna mess with you when you're wearing Ombre Leather. This is probably one of the baddest fragrances on the market, guys. It just, oh man. You'll get respect when people smell this, I'm telling you right now. So glad to have Ombre Leather in my collection as well. This is actually my first signature line bottle in my collection as well too. This used to come in a private blend known as Ombre Leather 16, but that was discontinued. I think that was around for two years, but they discontinued it and put it in this signature line. And they've been doing that for quite a few fragrances such as Beau Jure, which I do own the private blend. They put it in this bottle as well. They Costa Azura, stuff like that. but. Yeah, Ombre Leather is a phenomenal leather fragrance. I absolutely adore this one. All right, so the next fragrance I got for my birthday is actually from the house of Mason Margiela. You guys probably know them from like By the Fireplace, which I talk about a ton. That is my winter staple. I couldn't survive the winter without By the Fireplace, but this one is worth just as much hype as By the Fireplace, and that's Jazz Club. Whoa, this, oh. If you're looking for a boozy tobacco fragrance, look no further than Jazz Club. Oh, this is so good. Now I do want to, I do have, have a pet peeve I want to talk to you guys about. So I actually, she got this for me from Sephora. Now Sephora actually ships their fragrances out in bags, guys, with no protection, no bubble wrap, nothing like that, no box, nothing. Now. When the fragrance came, it's actually kind of funny because uh, she put them out in bags and I, I was smelling a fragrance. So I had, I had assumed there was a fragrance in the, one of the bags. And I, yeah, it was because look what happened to this bottle when I opened it, guys. It came like that. You see the top of the atomizer, it's completely broken off and cracked. And it's actually leaking. It was leaking all inside the bottle. I don't even think you could spray this. Um, I'm actually gonna be obviously be returning this and getting a replacement because this is just not acceptable at all. The whole box was like orange with this color leaking out of the side. If you touch it, it gets all over your hands and stuff, but that's unfortunate, but we will get that fixed because I absolutely love Jazz Club. Oh, I'm so happy to have this one. This is some people's favorite from the house alongside by the fireplace. I don't know which one I prefer. By the Fireplace is obviously one of my favorite winter fragrances, if not my favorite winter fragrance. But I'm sure once I start wearing Jazz Club, I'll start to adore this one just as much as By the Fireplace. Okay, so the last fragrance I got for my birthday is actually a classic from the late 70s, and it's actually a Barbershop Fougere fragrance. 
and the fragrance is actually a Zaro's Pour Homme. Now, this is actually a Zaro's first um, pour or men's fragrance. That was, I, like I said, I believe it was launched in the late 70s or so. This is just a phenomenal Fougere fragrance. It's simply what this is. Just classic masculine fragrance, pretty much. Um, it's done actually very, very well, especially, especially for the price you could pick this one up. It's just a steal, in my opinion. Definitely, if you're into barbershop Fougere fragrances, you have to check out a Zara Forum. You have to give it a shot, guys, at least. Um, the only other fragrance I own by or in this line is, like I said, Pour Homme Nighttime, which honestly, I'm not a huge fan of that. We spoke about that earlier with Joe's Rhubarb. It's a rhubarb heavy fragrance. Um, it doesn't last that long at all, but I actually wore this fragrance today, and man, I don't know what they did, but this stuff was just projecting around me like crazy. And it shocked me because I had actually low expectations for this fragrance just because of the flanker, which I shouldn't have, but I did. And that one just does not perform at all. It doesn't project. It barely lasts on my skin, probably around six hours or so. This one, on the other hand, for a 10 hour shift, I smelled it all the way up until the end of the day, getting whiffs all day long. And yeah, just even after I shower when I came home, I can probably still smell it on me, guys. This stuff's very good, especially for the price of you're in the Fougere Barbershop fragrance check out a Zara Pour on this classic masculine scent. But that's gonna wrap up all of the fragrances I received for Christmas and my birthday. I'm definitely happy with all of these guys. Um, they're all staples in my collection. My collection's already grown. We just did that collection video and it's already grown quite significantly. Cannot wait to see how it changes throughout the uh, end of the year. But let me know down below what fragrances you guys got for Christmas. I love to hear that stuff. And yeah, leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll catch all you guys in the next upload. Take care, everybody.